Sharon stands for Sanctuary for Health and Reconnection to Animals and Nature. And today we are seeing, because of our unnatural lifestyle, we are seeing so many hormonal issues. What are these hormonal issues? Common problems are diabetes and polycystic ovarian disease and hypothyroidism and premature puberty and menstrual problems, infertility, menstrual problems like what Madhura just described to you, acne, prostate enlargement, breast, ovarian, prostate cancer are also hormone uh, connected and vitamin D deficiency and gynecomastia. So many young men and boys have breasts like women. This is something that's happening nowadays. What are hormones exactly? Hormones are chemical messengers that are secreted into the bloodstream and they go from one place to another. For example, many people have hypothyroidism. And you know that we check the levels of hypothyroidism by checking the TSH levels. And TSH is a hormone that's secreted by the pituitary gland. It's, TSH means thyroid stimulating hormone. So it's a hormone that goes from the pituitary gland to the thyroid gland and tells the thyroid secrete more hormones. And then the thyroid secretes, the thyroid gland secretes uh, thyroid, T3 and T4. And that's why we get all these tested. So there are a large number of hormones that, you know, look after all these functions in our body. And I'm not going to uh, read all of them because you don't need to remember all these names. But a few things that we will understand is that the pituitary gland, which is a gland at the back of the brain, is the master control gland that is like the conductor of the whole orchestra. So just like I told you, the pituitary sends out a message to the thyroid gland. Similarly, the pituitary also sends out messages to the ovaries to produce certain hormones or the testes to produce hormones or the adrenals to produce hormones. So the pituitary is like a conductor of the whole hormonal orchestra. And actually all the hormones are connected. So when one hormone goes out of balance, other hormones can also go out of balance, which is why so many people have multiple hormonal problems. Like I see patients with hypothyroidism and diabetes and menstrual problems and even vitamin D deficiency all together. And that's because all these hormones are interconnected. And so if we start looking after all of them, everything can get balanced again. The pineal gland produces melatonin, which affects the sleep. And then the hypothalamus, which is a gland also in the brain, and it controls the body temperature, the hunger, moods, threat, thirst, sleep, sex drive. And then there's the thyroid gland, which is in the neck. And the thyroid gland controls the metabolism and the heart rate. And there's parathyroids, which control the calcium levels in the body. And then there's the thalamus, which is behind the sternum. And the thalamus controls the immune system. And then there are the adrenal gland behind ad the renal, behind the kidneys. And they control the sex drive and produce stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. And the pancreas produces insulin. And ovaries produce estrogen, testosterone, progesterone. These are sex hormones in women and the testes in men produce testosterone. And all these hormones are regulating our various functions, including our emotions. You heard that Madhura said that when she was on um, birth control pills, which are hormones themselves, she had emotional problems as well. So the key to solving any problem, you know, when we go to the doctor, if our thyroid hormones are low, doctor says, 
take thyroxine. But we do it differently. We say, okay, now this person has hypothyroidism. We can't leave someone with hypothyroidism. We have to do something immediately. Therefore, we're giving thyroxine, but we are going to understand the cause of the problem and remove it. And so today I'll be talking to you about the causes of hormonal problems so that we can remove them and make sure that we don't get these problems. And as we get better, if we are on hormones, for example, if we are on thyroid hormones, as we get better, we will start removing these medicines. So what are the main causes of hypothyroidism or the causes of, I'm sorry, the causes of all hormonal problems? And the causes are number one, hormones themselves. For example, when Madhura was taking hormonal tablets, she found that she had emotional problems. So she had, it controlled certain symptoms, but it was creating new symptoms. And she put on a lot of weight. Or chemicals, because chemicals are hormone disruptors. And of course, fat, because hormones are stored in fat. And that's why even when we start removing the causes of the hormonal problems, because the hormones are stored in the fat in our body, it takes some time in order to reverse a hormonal problem. So number one cause of hormones is hormones themselves. And these can come from medicines like steroids or hormones or oral contraceptives or even thyroxine. And therefore it must always be given in the right dosage or vitamin D or even hormone replacement therapy that some people take after menopause. And then animal products, because animals just like us produce hormones. And so if we are consuming dairy or meat, we are also taking in all those hormones that came from that animal, right? And then animals and plants are often injected with hormones. For example, cows are artificially inseminated again and again in order to produce milk. Then while they're pregnant, they are lactating. And in, in order to, because of the earlier pregnancy, and in order to produce more milk, they are given hormones that oxytocin in order to produce more milk. And so this also comes back to us in the milk. Or for example, today, chickens are made to grow to full size in 42 days. Normally, it takes 84 days. But now they grow to full size in half the time. This is done with the help of hormones. So these hormones come back to us through the food that we eat. In fact, have you seen that they also make plants grow bigger and bigger? And sometimes they use growth hormones on plants too. And so it comes back to us. Then number two, chemicals. That means that if we want to get rid of hormonal problems, we have to get rid of the causes. That means as soon as possible, we have to minimize medication and remove medication. That means if you're on medication for diabetes and high blood pressure and a variety of other problems and you want to get rid of thyroid uh, pills, then you have to take care of all the other issues because these hormones these medicines are also affecting, right? Medicines are also chemicals. Or we have to cut out all the animal products. And also we want to eat plants that are organic. And then we want to, chemicals are hormone disruptors, as we said, and we want to cut out all the foods containing chemicals. So what are the foods containing chemicals? Number one, the conventionally grown foods, pesticides are chemicals, right? Number two, the packaged foods, because packaged foods have all kinds of chemicals. So whenever you buy packaged food, please look at the ingredients list and count the number of ingredients and see if you can 
read all the ingredients or pronounce all the ingredients. And if not, you may want to reconsider eating that food. And then, as I said before, medicines are chemicals. That's why it's really important for us to minimize medicines as well as hormonal medication in order to get free of hormonal problems. And then personal care products. You know, all these things have chemicals in them. We often don't look at the ingredients in our toothpaste, but toothpaste or regular toothpaste is often filled with chemicals. So if you can't pronounce, and you know, they hide the um, ingredients of toothpaste carefully because nobody would put those in their mouth if they knew what they were. Therefore, we want to look carefully at the ingredient list and if we can't pronounce everything or don't know what it is, let's avoid these things. Let's try to get the simplest toothpaste, the less chemical, um, the, the toothpaste with least chemical ingredients, maybe even just tooth powders, or even clean our teeth just with a toothbrush rather than with something, some chemicals the mouthwashes, the soaps, the shampoos, the perfumes, all of these things that we put in and on our body are absorbed and they can cause hormone disruption. And today our lives are filled with so many chemicals, which is why we have more and more hormonal problems. If you look at this chart, you can see that you know, I've written products that women commonly use for um, as cosmetics and also shampoo. And you can see the average number of chemicals in the second column. And you can see that perfume, whether it's for women or men, contains a lot of different chemicals. And then in the third column, I've written the most worrying chemicals in these products. So you can look up your product and see whether it has these worrying chemicals, which lead to either cancer or hormone disruption or other problems. So you can see all the side effects in the last uh, column. And then home care products. Home care products are... Um, you know, like the window cleaners and toilet cleaners, even agarbattis and scented candles and phenyls and mosquito repellents and pest control. All of these are chemicals that we use often, far too often. And, you know, many things can be cleaned just with baking soda and vinegar or things that are less harmful. So let's start using these things and just for this, you know, we have a special session called Eco Kaki. And you can see the old sessions on our YouTube channel. And there, uh, Eco Kaki teaches us how to make our own soaps or our own cleaning products or even our own personal care products so that we have less chemicals in our lives. This is an article from the BBC which said that women are more prone to poorer lung function because they're breathing all these chemicals while cleaning the homes. And then there are chemicals that might find their way into your kitchen. So the things to avoid in your kitchen are the microwave. How do chemicals get into our uh, food through the microwave? Because we are often heating the foods in plastic plates or in alum, um, in some melamine containers and these can leach chemicals into the food. Or the non-stick. Non-stick also is chemical. Teflon is chemicals that leach into the food, especially when the temperatures are high. Aluminum also, if you are using sour foods, especially in your aluminum containers, it can leach into the food. So we don't want aluminum in the food or Teflon in the food or even plastics in the food. And therefore we should avoid all of these things. And truly we should even avoid plastic containers. 
So have you ever noticed that when you drink water from a, you know, bottled water, it tastes different. You can actually taste the chemicals. And that's the, when you buy the water the first time. If you fill the bottle again, it won't smell as much. But still, chemicals can leach in. And therefore, it's very important not to keep these plastic bottles in the sun, in the freezer, uh, to avoid using plastic containers. And if you must use them, and you know, we all need to use these sometimes. Don't put hot foods into the plastic container or don't use the plastic containers so much for freezing. Now, plastic ends up in our body in a variety of ways. And there are websites that tell us that it could be as much as equal to a credit card, that much plastic per week in our body. How does all that plastic end up in our body? So I started thinking and started making a list. And one of the ways is, of course, the garbage that we're putting out in our environment, right? So garbage goes into the environment. And if you live in a rural place like I do, it's burnt and we're breathing in the plastic or it's just left on the soil and then water seeps in to the soil through the garbage and comes back to us. And so we're absorbing all these chemicals. So, so many ways in which plastic can end up in our bodies. If we're drinking bottled water, of course, the garbage that I already mentioned, the frozen food and the ready-made bought frozen food, which comes in plastic bags and the microwave food and fish because so much plastic ends up in the sea and then it ends up in fish. And then when we consume fish, it ends up in our bodies. And then the animals that were fed fish, for example, the, um, the, you know, when people go out to catch fish, they use trawlers and they pick up a whole lot of fish and all this fish is not food that we consume. So the remaining fish is taken to a rendering plant and it's dried up and fed back to animals in our food chain. The chickens, the cows, even the cows that are um, herbivores are fed rendered slaughterhouse byproducts. So, and in the rendering plant, not only do the fish contain plastic, but the Animals that have been slaughtered may have had plastic in their bodies, like, for example, cows that are feeding on um, garbage, uh, you know, like the we often throw food that cows could eat in plastic bags. So the cows eat the organic matter, but they may eat the plastic bags along with it. And this is rendered that means dried up the slaughterhouse waste and fed back to animals in our food chain. Even the plastic tags, nobody bothers to take off plastic tags in a slaughterhouse. Things are done in a big hurry and all the waste is sent to the rendering plant. So animals in our food chain are giving plastic back to us as well. And then animals that are feeding on garbage like for example i see cows feeding on garbage pits all the time and wonder about the milk in fact tests have been done on the milk of cows and if it's been found that there's a lot of plastic or pcbs in the milk so if you want to know more about that a really good film is called the plastic cow and it's been made in India and it's about how cows eat plastic and then this comes back to us. Garbage we already talked about. Then microbeads in detergents. You know, the microbeads remain in the water that goes out and goes back to the whole water pools into the soil and it comes back to us in different ways. Very close to my house, there's a stream and there are people, villagers who are washing their clothes. 
And then the detergent, and they love to use a lot of detergent. And then the detergent goes back into the stream and then the cows are feeding in that stream. So it comes back to us. And then I was just thinking about dental fix fixtures and also, you know, when we have a cataract operation and the, the lens that is put into our eyes is also plastic. So plastic enters our body in so many different ways. Microbeads in toothpaste, disposable cups, like when we have plastic cups or thermocol cups to drink hot beverages, the plastic leaches in. And cosmetics, we already talked about. And then the air, I talked about how they're uh, burning plastic around me. So, so many ways, right? And so that's how we get that one credit card worth of plastic in our bodies every day. So sources of chemicals are non-organic foods, packaged food, medicines, personal care products, home care products, plastics, and environmental pollution. Um, I want to invite a special guest now, and that is Anjali. Anjali, are you there? Anjali, Anjali was working in the corporate uh, sector for many years, and she had been married for 12 years and hadn't conceived. And she was okay with it. She was busy in a corporate life when she came across Sharon for something else, actually. And she got a big surprise. So Anjali, over to you. Do you want to share your story? Yes, ma'am. Uh, basically, uh, see, since uh, I got my periods, they were always irregular. And uh, I used to even get severe cramps at times. So my mother used to say it's all normal, it happens. And uh, maximum I have uh, used hot water bags to combat those cramps on those, you know, very tough days. Later when I got married, we were married for almost 12 years. And me and my husband, like, you know, whatever reasons were, we, uh, I didn't conceive or we didn't have child. So we were okay with it, uh, completely fine because we both were earning and we were living our lives. So we were, com so we never went to any doctor to go for any kind of treatments or checkups. Uh, in 2015, I got piles and my piles were very bad. So uh, I treated myself through whole plant-based diet and uh, you know, in that process, my uh, not only piles reduced, my cycle also, uh, you know, became regular. Looking at me, me and my husband followed the same uh, diet and he supported me in that. We both not only lost weight, like my husband lost 18 kgs and I lost 12 kgs. And uh, in that process, we were in for surprise because uh, suddenly I conceived naturally at the age of 39 years. Okay, and it was a big thing. My delivery also was quite normal. Later, today my son is seven years old and I am right now in my menopause phase. Still, I, can, I have continued my whole plant-based diet and uh, my, I don't have any kind of symptoms uh, related to menopause. Like it's very normal. Today, my family, me, my husband or my child, we are living a healthy life. We don't have any kind of medication. Thank you, Anjali, for that. You know, I, I know that your story and Madhu's, Madhura's story is very inspiring to other people because to know that, you know, so many people suffer from infertility these days and to know that changing your diet can, you know, help you conceive after so many years of not conceiving, isn't that amazing? And that not having any menopausal problems as well. And I can vouch for that because I also didn't have any problems during menopause. In fact, I had painful periods, but when I became plant-based, after some time, it took some time, my pains disappeared and I had the most easy menopause. I never even knew that I was going through menopause and I can see that it's the same for you. Yeah, so that's so amazing. And we talked about that, you know, the main causes of hormonal problems are hormones themselves, 
that can come through medicines or hormones or even animal products and chemicals and all the different ways in which chemicals enter our body. And the third way is fat, because I said fat stores hormones. And fat can come through oil, ghee, butter. And that's why we consume, um, we consume foods without any oil. So we have cooking classes which teach you how to cook without oil. And that's so useful to get through uh, hormonal problems. And also animal products are full of fat, all animal products. And therefore, when we stop consuming meat and fish and dairy products of all kinds and eggs, then we are on our way to getting over these hormonal issues. If you heard any of my other talks, you know that the natural food for human beings is plant-based because these are the foods that we're instinctively attracted to when we see them on a farm. Like we're not instinctively attracted on, to goats or cows. We don't feel like pouncing on them and we definitely can't eat them raw like other animals, like true carnivores or omnivores can. But, you know, it's really hard to understand that milk is bad for us. Why is milk so bad for us? Because milk contains fat. You know, when you boil milk, you get fat on top. And truly, when we boil animal products, we also see fat on top. Milk contains hormones. Today, milk contains more hormones than any time else before because we're keeping cows pregnant all the time so that the milk cycle goes on. So a cow has to deliver in order to produce milk. So cows are artificially made pregnant as soon as they can conceive, that is at the age of two years, so that they'll deliver and then we'll get milk. But within two months of delivery, they're artificially inseminated again. So they are pregnant and lactating at the same time. And this produces a lot more hormones in the milk. And so today, milk contains a lot of hormones. Then milk contains pus. Why pus? Because cows' udders are always inflamed because of milk machines or human hands, which are not meant to manipulate the udders. And so... Cows have to be given antibiotics in order to control that inflammation and pus formation. But there is a certain allowance of pus in milk in every country. And usually nobody talks about it because no matter what we do, there's more pus than allowed in milk in most bottles of milk. And then there's a concentration of pesticides because cows are not eating always organic food. And so all the pesticides in those 12 kilos of grain that they will consume in order to produce one liter of milk is concentrated in the milk. And so animal products, milk and other animal products always contain more pesticides than we can get through fruits and vegetables. We just don't realize it. And then rendered products, you know, no matter where we are in the world. Like I agree that in India, cows eat in garbage, but in the West, they may not eat at garbage dumps, but rendering is done everywhere in the world. So cows with plastic tags, these tags go back into the rendering plants and they're dried up and this goes back into the food for all animals. And then, so the ready-made animal products, the animal food contains rendered products everywhere in the world. And stress, when we are stressed, we produce adrenaline. Animals in our food chain are always stressed because they're being exploited in different ways. And so those stress hormones come back to us through the food. And that's why you will find that when you stop consuming animal products, stress levels actually go down. Now, 
many people ask, what about organic milk? And organic milk also contains fat. It also contains hormones. And though it may not contain pesticides or antibiotics, it does contain pus and it does contain stress hormones. And therefore, organic milk is not advised either if you want to get well. But you know, truly, why is milk not advised? Because it's not the natural food for our species. Like we know very well that every mammal produces milk only for their young. And no animal in nature drinks another animal's milk. Like goats don't drink pig's milk or monkeys don't drink elephant's milk, but we are drinking other animals' milk, right? So before I go ahead, I want to invite two people to share now. And um, the first one is Man Manika. Manika, are you there? Okay. So Manika was a vegetarian and she got married and you know, celebrating married life. They started eating all kinds of things. Manika, please share your story and tell them how you were suffering from severe acne, right? After marriage, go ahead. Uh, so hello, everyone. Uh, right after I got married, uh, my diet changed drastically and uh, I started eating uh, all kinds of food. And within a month, I started to develop severe acne on my face. And uh, I didn't know what was happening. Uh, and since I was newly married, I wasn't very comfortable with it. So I started visiting many dermatologists to um, understand. And they prescribed many treatments and uh, which entailed uh, getting chemical peels done and also popping in some uh, pills. But uh, it wasn't helping and uh, my confidence was going down. I wasn't feeling very comfortable. So I started looking for various other options. And that's when I stumbled upon one of the videos by uh, Dr. Nandita Shah. And uh, she, where she'd mentioned that particularly that uh, milk uh, contains hormones and uh, uh, because of it, which there are many problems that women face and that also includes uh, PCOD and acne. Uh, so coming from a doctor, I thought, okay, let me try. And uh, I was a heavy uh, dairy eater by that time. I mean, I was, I used to have milk and cheese and butter. I used to love all of that. But uh, I, because I was desperate and I wanted to try, so I dropped dairy from my diet completely. Uh, it was December 2021. So um, I think within a month, January 2022, I, see, I saw that there were no new acne breakouts and even the earlier ones were getting subdued. So I saw this working on my skin and uh, that's when I decided that, okay, I'll, I'll go further and I'll try the Sharon lifestyle completely and see how it goes. So I attended various workshops and uh, I was I included more salads. I included more whole food in my diet, the plant based diet. And uh, I guess uh, by uh, March 2022, I lost seven kgs. There were no new acne breakouts. My skin got clear. I was feeling like a different person altogether. It was a it was a wonderful transformation. I started getting compliments and everybody was asking me what I was doing. So uh, not only did I lose weight, but uh, I gained so much confidence. And uh, one and a half years into this lifestyle, I've lost close to 11 kgs and I'm fitter, I'm healthier, I'm more active. And uh, of course I've found this, I, I think this is my purpose. I really want to take this knowledge forward so that everybody knows that uh, this lifestyle is actually transformational and it truly really works. So yeah, I thank Dr. Nandita Shah for that. Thank you, Manika, for sharing. And I know that your story is very inspiring for other people. And of course, just like you and Madhura and even um, Anjali, everyone who follows this lifestyle and gets better definitely wants to share it because it makes such a big difference. So thank you, Manika, for that inspiring story. And now before I end, and I just have a few slides to end, 
But before I end, I want to invite Vandana. And many of you may have already met Vandana because she's one of our cooking instructors and has been a facilitator with us for quite some time. And Vandana had hypothyroidism, which was detected during pregnancy. And she was prescribed medicines, but now she's off all of them. Vandana, would you like to share your story? Yes. So, hello, doctor. So, in the year 2000, where during my pregnancy, uh, in the routine blood test, I found out about my hypothyroidism. And that time, my TSH levels were 49. And seeing that uh, doctor put me on um, 136 mg per day medicines, and even I was still facing a lot of problems like weight gain issues, hair loss, lethargy, and heart palpitation. It was like, this was the major symptoms I suffered through all my pregnancy. And I was overweight, and I was just looking for some uh, solution for this. Then I came to know about oil-free cooking class by Sharon. So I just started attending cooking classes and being a good cook, I started doing oil-free cooking and making my food oil-free. And it was so easy to lose weight with the oil-free and dairy-free food. And cooking is also very easy and food is delicious. So even it was so easy for my family to adjust with it. And uh, they didn't mind it and they also got healthier with this and my son got free from eczema so it was a big surprise for me and uh, my husband lost excess weight and even I lost 13 kgs of weight with this whole food plant-based lifestyle and my TSH levels uh, are normal and now I'm totally off medication all thanks to you <laughs> congratulations for everything that you've done I know that you're a wizard of a cook and you're making so many, um, you know, you're teaching people so many things about whole plant-based and that's really amazing. And your story is so inspiring because imagine she was on 137, 137, right? 136, 136, 136 micrograms of thyroxin. Yeah. And now she's off it all as all together. Congratulations for that. Remember that it went step by step, right, Vandana? It wasn't like she stopped the medicine overnight, but gently reduced it. And now it stopped. So back to my screen share. And I'm almost done. Um, so we talked about how organic milk is also not good. And many people ask about soy and can soy cause hypothyroidism or breast cancer because soy is full of phytoestrogens. And I just want to tell you that no plants produce hormones like animals do. Phytoestrogens are not similar to real estrogens. And all these, uh, all these fruits and vegetables and beans that you see here, they all have phytoestrogens in them, not just soy. We don't need to worry about soy. The only thing that we have to worry about soy is that it can be genetically modified. Genetically modified means that it's producing its own uh, pesticide. And we definitely don't want to have that. And therefore, we should always check that everything that we consume is organic. Right now, Non-organic soy is not grown in India, but it will come. It can come from outside. And so we always have to be careful to eat organic. So in summary, hormonal problems are caused by hormones, fat, and chemicals. Chemicals and plastic are hormone disruptors. And hormonal treatments can also cause problems so we need to reduce or eliminate chemicals in our food and the environment. And of course, we can't remove everything, but we can remove a lot of it. Phytoestrogens are not harmful. And soy per se is not harmful, but genetically modified soy can be harmful. Hormonal issues take time to heal. 
but you can slowly get free of medications if you're on them. Now, what can you do to prevent and reverse hormonal disorders? Follow Sharon's five-point plan of plant-based, whole, organic, and vitamin B12 and vitamin D. You saw that Vandana joined our cooking classes in the beginning, and she learned through our cooking classes how to cook oil-free and also how to replace dairy products. So we make our own plant-based cheeses and milks and even all the things that are made from milk like curds or buttermilk and those recipes are already on our website so you can see them there reduce the chemicals in your life don't forget that eco khaki that i told you on our youtube channel and minimize medications this can be done also through a whole food plant-based lifestyle. We're always helping people reduce their medications through our consultation. Now, reversing disease requires a shift in consciousness because today we're living in a culture of disease, which is why it might even be a little difficult to switch to a whole food plant-based lifestyle, the kind that Sharon recommends, because everyone else is doing something different. And so when we go um, out socializing or anything, we always have this trouble of what are we doing and how can we do it in a way that um, everyone else is doing. And so the, the more people that get better and spread this message, the easier it will be for us to do. Like when I became plant-based, there was no soy milk available in the market, leave alone the other alternatives. But now so many alternatives are available, right? So we can get better from all of this.